Hey guys, so last um, thermal disorder to go over is hypothermia. Um, so hypothermia is a systemic um, dis uh, disorder where your temperature gets below 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and um, it can get pretty severe and life-threatening um, because your whole body goes into a state where, you know, it loses the ability to regulate or compensate for that loss and can lead to death. Um, so usually these patients have like those risk factors, like we already mentioned in the last video, um, but think a lot of people that are like, um, they have exposure to freezing temperatures, like especially those that are homeless or outside an environment where they're not going to have the same, um, thermal support on um, people wearing wet clothing and especially if they're in a cold climate and then any sort of immersion in cold water, like drowning, um, they're going to be like, you should kind of put in your brain. Like if you have a patient who came in, um, that, um, was near drowning in cold water, um, you'd be concerned about hypothermia come on all right so what would i expect um i would expect this patient to be shiver depending on how low their temperature is a lot of times they'll be shivering because their body's tr trying to compensate then everything is slow and low their mental status they're usually very confused decreased level of consciousness and then all of their vital signs are low their respirations are low their heart rate is low their blood pressure is low everything is low and um you know this is all just because the body's lost the ability to regulate and so th pretty much like your body does it like think of it like a battery that's draining it's just not working the same way that it's supposed to so they're breathing really like not not enough heart rate really a lot of bradycardia and then they're really hypotensive um, we're going to assess their mental status. Now, remember for the last, I put peripheral neurovascular assessment, that should be off. I've copied and pasted myself into a quarter. Um, yeah, I'm going to, I'll go back and change this for my actual lecture. And I apologize sometimes when I don't, um, I do my best to make these perfectly beautiful, but I'm human. So um, really here. It should be mental status, temperature, and vitals are my priority. We're going to, of course, check everything else too, but um, we're really looking because this is more life and death. We're focused on um, the change in mental status they can have. They could be in a coma. Um, we're going to be assessing their temperature and um, seeing um, you know, where that is because that can a lot of time affect our treatment. And then those vital signs, their hemodynamic stability. Now, of course, we will assess their skin if they're in pain and their peripheral neurovascular, but that was more meant for frostbite. All right, so it's getting better if their temperature is better, if their mental status is improving, their vital signs are getting better, everything should be going up if it's getting better. Um, signs of hydration because of the, um, when things, the blood gets cold, it also gets thick. And so um, a lot of times dehydration can occur and they also have very high risk for blood clots. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. There's a lot of dysrhythmias um, that can happen when they're, um, and heart irritability, um, when their, um, uh, what do you call it, temperature is low, and then uh, they can also go into like metabolic acidosis, so watching their, um, seeing improvement in their acid base, so of course everything else is the opposite, um, just keep in mind they can go into complete kidney failure, the blood clots, and they could throw, like have a stroke, so look for those signs of stroke, or um, pulmonary embolism or heart attack, um, dysrhythmias are a big thing, and dysrhythmias happen when they're cold but also can happen when we're rewarming now some dysrhythmias are a good thing it's kind of like the heart is waking up but like these patients if they're really low like I think your book talks about like if it's getting down to like below 86 degrees then um, they're pretty much in a constant state of v-fib or like they're really like they're gone they're usually not alive anymore um, and you know of course everyone's a little different but um, yeah it can get very serious the guy that I was talking about in my last video he was like at 84 degrees because I remember him being like the coldest person I ever saw and he took like three days to warm up and to wake up so it was definitely a um, different situation um, but yeah but watching everything closely for all these complications so with these people um what we're going to do remember with uh heat stroke we were like rapid cooling and you internal and external with these patients it's not the same for 
cold disorders. With cold disorders, we have to, we want to rewarm them, but we don't do it rapidly because that change in temperature from cold to warm, um, it can lead to really serious dysrhythmias and a lot of problems. So we want to take our time and um, uh, what do you call it? Allow for a progressive increase in their body temperature. Um, and when I say take our time, it's nothing like, it's not that we're going to like, you know, like do like something crazy, like wait like a month for their temperature to go up, but we're just not going to be like rapidly trying to force it to go up because they can have um, a lot of severity in that um, cold to warm um, change. Um, so warm environment, definitely. Um, we usually do a heated high flow oxygen for this patient. Uh, we give them um, sometimes warm fluid resuscitation or warm up their IV fluids. Uh, we do heating devices. This is that bear hugger I was talking about earlier. It's a, um, and they have different size ones. They can't have ones just for lower extremities or upper. We usually do a full body one. And know that when you're using something like this or like, you know, other things, and I don't really know how this would work out, but your book really just hits home about it, is, is that you always want to warm the trunk first and the extremities. Because if I warmed my extremities and then that warm blood went to my heart, that's super cold and frozen, um, it can lead to some uh, instability and shock and stuff like that. So always want to start with my core first and then warm my extremities. But, you know, in real reality, it's not like I'm sticking the arms out of the bear hugger and saying just the core first, you know. <laughs> so, um, But um, just keep in mind in case there's ever a test question, um, it's always trunk first or the like think the chest, the center and then the extremities um, for heating. Um, keep the patient's head covered. You lose a lot of heat through your head. So we usually wrap their he um, head in a warm blanket. It really helps. Um, other things, this is that alceus that I talked about when I talked about heat, um, you know, heat stroke and things like that. And this can also um, warm a patient up. It can cool them down or warm them up, warm it up. And it goes through that central line, usually in the groin. And um, it has this balloon that um, uh, helps circulate you know, different temperature and you set the temperature and then you can also set it like, for example, with patients like this, like I'll set it to like increase by this many points for their temperature every so many hours or something. Um, and it's going to like do that all by itself. Um, and so um, <clears throat> it's definitely very helpful to have that. It also allows you to keep a close eye on their temperature or better regulate it. We use it also for patients that are, um, they're doing the hypothermia protocol for cardiac arrest. Um, it was found that preventing fevers in patients that are, um, their heart has stopped to help. So like sometimes we'll use these machines too, to keep people right at 36 degrees ish. Um, but yeah, just kind of a fun side note for my cardiac nerds out there. Um, anyway, so we're going to um, warm them. And you can see this is like a, compared to frostbite, I was doing more um, local treatment. It was more about infection. It was more about um, their skin. This is more about systemically warming them. And then there's a ton of complications. Like I'm really looking at their like heart stability because there's the chance of blood clots, chance of dysrhythmias, chance of um, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, you know, like vital signs are really off with the bradycardia and stuff like that and the hypotension. So I really am giving like a lot of stability. Like this is like a core problem and think your core is your heart. A lot of, um, instability there. So we're going to do ECG monitoring. Like I said, it can be normal to have some um, you know, um, some basic dysrhythmias as their heart starts to wake up. But if there's anything severe, we should definitely report it. Um, fluid and electrolyte replacement because they can be off. And especially like usually with these patients, we're checking their electrolytes and stuff sometimes every two hours to every four hours, just depending. Um, we're monitoring their coagulation closely because they're really high risk for blood clots. And then the acid base balance just because they're risk for that metabolic acidosis. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed learning all about when things get cold and when things get hot. See you for the next one.